stage, and I'm excited to be joined today by the lead singer of the band, Michael Barnes. Michael, how are you doing today, man? I am doing great, man. I am just happy to be here, here in uh, uh, Texas right now, but uh, I know we're heading to your uh, great state of Florida. Just happy to be here, and uh, and uh, we appreciate you just uh, hanging out with me. Well, I'm so glad to have you on here, Michael. Uh, it's This is actually a first of being able to talk to you. Usually, uh, I'm talking to Randy about the new records and stuff, but um excited to have you on here man and I've, I've got a chance to not only see you guys out in the road on tour over the years but i've got a chance to to meet you many times on pretty much every tour that uh red has done uh since you know the debut record and you know the band officially started just a little over 20 years ago you guys became red um back in 2002 in nashville tennessee but you and your bandmates uh, back then randy and Anthony Armstrong were already friends to that point, correct? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been friends since third grade. Actually, I was came from a, a very very small town in uh, just north of where we grew up in Linesville, and I had just moved into town. I got there when I was in second grade, met the guys when I was in third grade. Uh, we became friends, and slowly over the uh, you know the years as they proceeded, um, you know, getting involved in uh, music and activities in high school. And we, you know, we, we became friends and uh, we, you know, hung out at our youth group and we had this community youth group where all the churches in town uh, all like decided to get together and create one big youth group, which is kind of cool. And we called it CYCF. It was Community Youth Group Christian Fellowship or something like something like that. And, and, and so it just kind of, yeah, so it just kind of spurned from there. And uh you know, many times we we were from Pennsylvania, so we went to um, Creation Festival in Pennsylvania there. And <clears throat> some of my major influences growing up were like uh, Michael W. Smith and Petra and things like that. And then as we moved to Nashville, uh, I think it was 2002, like you said, 2002, uh, we weren't quite red yet. Uh, we had moved to Nashville in 2002 and we were, we were just kind of deciding on what we wanted to do as far as like music you know some of our tastes were changing right then like lincoln park had just come out and i loved like the angstiness of lincoln park and just kind of that pure tone but then screaming and so a lot of that was influenced i think with you know with our christian roots kind of going into it and that's kind of how end of silence was created um so more from there yep yeah that's and actually when i when i first heard end of silence i know it came out June 6, 2006, and I remember getting a pre-release copy of that record probably about two months before the record came out, and immediately when I heard it, because uh, because the um, uh, Breathe Into Me has a has a has that intro, and then it goes right into the song, and I remember hearing that I'm like, wow, this band musically is very uh, you know similar to you know what we'd heard from Lincoln Park and stuff like that, but as I got more and more through that record, I'm like you know you guys did have your own sound and you know that's kind of yeah. that's kind of like progressed over the years and stuff but with each record there's still you can still tell you're red and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I've, I've always loved that sound that you guys have and you know some people like you know watching in right now may be wondering okay the band's called red and i was reading uh that red is basically just something easy to remember was was there any kind of great story behind the band's name, how you guys came up with the name? I mean, Red really just me it's short for redemption. Um, and so we're going to kind of get into about the video that we just shot, which Redeemers. And so it's just short for redemption, but it also means a lot of things. Like our music entails kind of embodies like uh, humanity in itself, like uh, the different emotions that we go through as, as uh, you know, as created beings from God. And, you know, we have we have emotions of like love and and hate and uh and pain and anguish and and uh so red just kind of embodied a lot of those different you know it's like a power color a lot of those different things when you think of red you think of love you think of you know anger you know people call it like seeing red uh, when they're angry so uh you know we wanted to i think we wanted to dive into some of the um uh emotions and like the music really wanted to touch on the different parts of uh not just uh um you know christianity itself but just like as humans what do we go through as humans right um uh and so we really wanted to reach out not only to you know our christian audience because we really do reach out to a lot of non-christians too as well and and so 
that's kind of been our goal is to really reach out and encourage, you know, Christians or non-Christians, whoever they are, wherever they're at. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people come to the faith too, as well, that are like, you know, <clears throat> I was a Christian at one point or, um, and, uh, you know, I heard your music and, you know, I decided to come back or somebody who just like, you know, read into our lyrics, found out more about us. So it's really cool to see those kind of stories. It is. And I, and it's, as far as like, you know, you really described, you really described uh, Red's music, like the emotions and stuff and Red's music over the years has been very much uh, emotional all across the board. Like there's so many emotions in your music and everything. And that's what I really like because you have songs that can be very like, uh, like piano driven and then all out where you're like, just, you've got the, the screaming vocals and stuff like that. So there's a lot of emotion uh, in that. And, you know, going back to the beginning when you guys were, you know, before End of Silence came out, uh, what were those couple of years like before you guys got started? Was it like hard getting out and like starting a band or, you know, what were those, what were those first couple of years prior to the debut record coming out like for you guys? I mean, it was like trying out different, you know, like trying to find your, that sound, trying to find the sound, like what, what's working, you know, as we started to create the kind of the core group you know, we had Randy and Anthony, we moved down together and then we found Jason Rao eventually after that and then uh, found a drummer <clears throat> just kind of, you know, through networking, um, talking to different people throughout the area of Nashville. Nashville's pretty flooded with musicians. And, uh, you know, we kind of hooked up with a uh, producer, producer Rob Graves, who was nearby where we lived, actually. He was, um, he had a um, space at this um, uh, studio that was just nearby. And so he was really interested and in, he's been doing a lot of different work in the um, kind of CCM realm. And he was really looking for a rock band that he could kind of help like create and, and form and shape a little bit. And so as we were kind of working on those sounds together, you know, he was liking what he was hearing. And so he kind of gave us homework to go back and, you know, write some more songs. I really like this stuff, you know, write some more songs. I'm curious to see, you know, if I want to work with you guys. And so that's kind of over the span of a couple of years, really working on the first six songs, like uh, the first six songs that we wrote were, um, or five songs, I think it was, was Breathe Into Me, Hide, Break Me Down, um, Wasting Time and Already Over. And then, so we worked on those core songs and then uh, started working at finding a label after that. And it was, you know, it, it was only like a, a couple of weeks before the labels were wanting to pick that up and and uh, we finished out the record got a budget so i was excited in the back in that period of time because you know you guys were on essential records for a long time uh you were like the 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 big rock group but there was another rock group that actually released their second record the same day that you guys released your debut and that was day of fire with cut and move uh also decipher down released their debut record the same day so june 6 2006 was an awesome day for rock music because i mean we had yeah. three still three killer records to this day that I, that have really stood the test of time uh, that were just total rockers that came from Christian music. Um, so th that was awesome. And, you know, we're here today because, uh, you know, speaking of records, you guys just released a brand new record. It's your eighth studio record called rated R. And I, you know, I was really excited about this because it had been, uh, been a little while since uh, you guys had released a record you released, uh, you know, I, I think like an acoustic, live acoustic uh set in the meantime but when this one came out i'm like yes we got some new red music so tell us a little bit about this new record its title and uh, how this project came to be so uh the last record was called declaration and that came out like right when covid was hitting and so declaration was actually our very first like independent record um we had just left the label we'd done our six albums kind of fulfilled our contract had left the label shortly after that and uh, was going to put out declaration we were building up for declaration we had many tours that we were on that we were pushing uh, we had all these plans to go over to europe you know we were actually on winter jam at the time mm -hmm. and it was the last three weeks of winter jam and everything just shut down you know in, in march i think it was early on in march and so <clears throat> declaration came out like i think first week of april and so we never got to really tour it at all and so we never felt like that was actually our very first like independent record. So, you know, we're thinking two weeks, we'll get back out there. We'll start working the record, whatnot. And, and, you know, two weeks became 20, you know, 20 months later. 
<clears throat> and so we, we didn't even know if we were going to have a job again. You know, a lot of musicians had to come off the road and, you know, they, and I'm, and a lot of venues shut down, things like that. So when we started uh, getting back into the studio, kind of dusting off those cobwebs, um, figuring out what we were going to do, um, it was it was exciting to get back into the studio and and kind of put those pieces back together. And so uh, when we started um, writing for this record, we, sometimes the you know sometimes the name of the record comes early on. Like uh, there was a few albums like Innocence and Instinct. Um, I think that was like an early on type idea. And you kind of write for the record. This one was a little bit later on in the, in, in the cycle itself. Um, <clears throat> but uh, rated R, just I think it just basically means that it's rated for red. You know, it just means rated red, which is, you know, it's like you said, all of our music kind of stands the test of time as far as like sounding like us. You can you can kind of put a, a thread or a needle through um, all of our records throughout the years. We've always yeah. tried to change the sound a little bit, you know, push ourselves a new a new direction a little bit, but still have that core sound of uh, who we are. Um, and so it, this was cool. This is actually our very first record that we produced ourselves. Um, Anthony Armstrong, uh, the guitar player for the band. Uh, produced this record we had uh, rob graves produced the last record declaration he had produced most of the records with us um, except for one um, and so this is our first venture to kind of get out and and uh, do it ourselves and uh, and so a lot of the writing was on you know we usually have some outside writers that we usually work with and we did work with a few uh, but it was more of just our core group of writing the songs and uh so uh, but uh yeah, i think it turned out great and we're happy with it. We're out here on tour now and, and uh, people are showing up and they're kind of sharing their experiences of how the music's affecting them. So it's, it's always cool to, to, to find what people are like really grooving and what, what they're liking about the record. And, and uh, it's kind of interesting. One of their favorite songs, it seems like now, is uh, it's the last track on the album. It's called Emergency. That's my favorite track. Yeah. So it seems like that's, <laughs> that seems to be the one that everybody's gravitating towards. And so uh, we've been kind of building our set around that a little bit, and and uh, but um, it's it, tours are going great, and uh, uh, definitely excited for you to come out and see the show in in uh, Saint Petersburg. Yeah, and I'm, I, you know, I'm really excited about that. And you know, one thing I noticed about this is that you know you guys have really let fans in on on the the progress of the recording process of Rated R because I remember seeing uh, pictures of, uh, you know, Anthony, you know, laying guitar tracks down on a tour bus which you know it, it did you find that aspect of recording you know really cool because you know back when you released your debut record you guys had to go into a studio and record a lot of this stuff and the process was was the process back then but now the technology has changed so much to where you can literally uh record an entire album uh, you know, with a cell phone. And it's just, it, it's crazy. I mean, back when you guys recorded that in studios with End of Silence, did you ever think one day, man, we're going to be able to record this stuff on a tour bus, we're going to be able to record this stuff backstage or on a, on a cell phone? Did you even think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think people don't realize like how much processing power they have in their pocket with these cell phones like nowadays. Like, I mean, it's 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 just ridiculous how fast technology is going. Now we have AI, so who, who knows what AI is going to do? in the future. I mean, it's going to definitely change our world in the next 10 years. And it's, and a lot of people are trying to project like what it's going to look like. And so it's the same thing with the, when the internet came out too, it's just every technological change, there's always something new and something different. And so it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's helped our sound for sure. Uh, as far as like bringing the sound from the studio to the stage, because the equipment that we're using is basically what we record with too, as well. So it's like, we're using the exact same sounds as far as like guitars and stuff <clears throat> and bass and, and, uh, and all those things that we can actually bring that sound to the stage. And so we keep uh, um, it pretty you know linear as, as far as like uh, you getting the same experience. Right. And, you know, you, speaking of the songs on the record, you know, you touched on Emergency. Emergency is my favorite track of the record. I just I, I, I love the energy of that track. Um, and, and, you know, this may be a tough question. I've, I've asked a couple artists lately uh, the same question about like uh, it's almost like naming your favorite child. It's almost, you know, a question that's kind of hard to answer. But is there a particular song or two on Rated R that 
uh, when you guys are recording it, you're like, man, I can't wait for fans to hear this track. Is there anything like that on, like, was there a track that kind of stuck out to you? Like, I'm wondering what Red fans are going to think of this track. Uh, yeah, I mean, the the song <clears throat> Cold World was one of my favorites just because it's the way it's sung. Um, like, when I started recording that song, um, I knew it was going to be a good song to sing. And so, and and just the emotions as I'm singing it. And so that's a song I really like to sing. Um, Emergency is fun too, as well. Um, it's it's a real like, you know, intense song, but then also has those tender moments too, as well, that are very bare, um, which I think kind of play to the crowd as far as like what an, or what an emergency is when you think about an emergency. The song, when it plays too, it has kind of that heartbeat type feel. Like it's real driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you've ever come upon an emergency, like somebody actually like choking or bleeding out or anything like that, like that, um, it can be very, uh, um, you know, bring people to their bare emotions. And that's what's cool about that song is it's very like, um, there isn't any like super deep, you know, lyrical, you know, magic or anything. It's just, it's very like just kind of crying out and saying, hey, I need help, rescue me, help me. And you see that I see a lot of that in the Psalms too, as well. Um, yeah, which is it's a good, it's a good way to end the record, right. though. Yeah, which is a you know, is Psalms are definitely ripe when it comes to um, good material. Yeah, well, you know, you you got a lot going on right now. We're going to touch on the tour that you guys are on right now, but uh, real quick, you guys act actually in addition to the record, you just released a new short fo uh, film called. The Redeemers. What can you tell us about this? I saw preview. I haven't seen it yet, but I saw previews. I'm like, I heard the the Bon Jovi "Blaze of Glory" playing in the background. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. We actually we uh, when we were first thinking about doing a uh, music video for the song "Surrogates," uh, we're like, oh man. What should, what should we do? You know, we're like, we're throughout all these different ideas. And we always wanted to do the desert or something out kind of in the desert -y. And that's where kind of a Western idea spun. And, and then we were thinking about, oh, you know, we could do, you know, do you want to do go along with the storyline that we've been kind of building for the past 12 years? And we decided, yes, we want to do that. And so, you know, just kind of working out the details. And But it was a lot of fun. I mean, we, we got to go to Utah. We were there for about five days. Uh, got barely any sleep. Basically just eating, you know, sandwiches and chips the whole time. <laughs> um, and it, it was exhausting. But it was, it was something that we'll never forget. Um, we had reached out to fans, uh, you know, months in advance to uh, let them know that we were wanting volunteers. Uh, people who'd want to come out and be extras for the, um, and we had certain criteria that had to be met. <clears throat> you know, I had to have a certain outfit, a look. And so, uh, and we kind of built that roster and it was a lot of fun. So one day out of those five days was, was, you know, the extras are going to show up and, and uh, they came early in the morning, like seven 30 in the morning and didn't leave till like eight o'clock at night, but it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was just a lot of fun and um, you know, something uh as me and randy and, and anthony were growing up you know playing cowboys and indians and all that and you know, it was definitely kind of a dream come true in a way to just to experience the atmosphere of just how beautiful utah is and itself and um i mean one of the, the it was actually the day with all the extras when we were shooting uh, one of the ending scenes uh, which i don't want to give it away for you but um there the weather uh that was going on was just unbelievable there was one side where there was this huge like um like lightning storm that was going on over on the left and then right over to the right of us you could see kind of like some clouds and some sunshine blaring through and then behind us was like a rainbow <laughs> so it was unbelievable just the just the, the lighting the just how beautiful the countryside was and and uh but we had a blast shooting shooting this thing and uh We'll see if we uh, uh, if we do a part two or not. That's cool. Well, it's it's funny you mentioned the weather being different over here than it is over here. I live in Florida, so that's our weather all the time. 
you know, in front of you, it could be all nice and sunny and stuff. And you look in the rear view mirror and there's like a dark, ominous looking storm cloud behind you. But that's like life here in Florida. That's the weather changes uh, like every five minutes here. So I totally understand that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you guys are currently on a tour right now. I actually saw some video of you guys doing some sound check, uh, like kind of getting fans uh, revved up and ready for this new tour. Um, tell us about this tour. Who you guys got out in the road with you? And um, what are you most excited about, about getting back out on a headlining tour? Uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't been on a headlining tour. Like uh, we've done a few shows here and there, but not like a straight headlining tour promoting a record. Um, it's been a while, really. I mean, probably not since Gone. And that's what Gone came out in 2018. Mm -hmm. So what is that, five five years ago <laughs> so it's been some time yeah so it's been some time it's it's exciting just to kind of see uh you know people are like yes finally coming back you know with full show like you said like you brought your friend to that show and but you're like you know you really want to see their show because it's it's a lot different um you know we get to we get to make the decisions on on uh you know the set list and um we get to throw in some stuff that's a little different and, and uh create ex some experiences that people wouldn't normally get to see when it's just us opening. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. And, you know, I, I did get a chance to see you guys earlier this year. You guys were on the first leg of the uh, Ponds and Kings tour with Alter Bridge and uh, Wolfgang Van Halen. Um, I'm a huge Mark Tremonti fan. I've been a fan since, you know, his days in Creed still are. I actually just got tickets to the Creed tour that was just announced for next year. Um, what was it like for that tour? I mean, I know you guys have toured with a lot of bands and stuff, but I, I noticed uh, over the years, especially with uh, Anthony, Anthony is a big PRS guy with his guitars and stuff. And of course, Mark Tremonti's got his own signature guitar, which I have one too. Uh, what was it like touring with Alter Bridge and, and Wolfgang on that tour earlier this year? Uh, it was great. I mean, we actually toured with Creed. I think it was back in like, what, 2000. 2011 maybe 2010 somewhere around there um oh, yeah, that, was, that was a tour with skillet skillet did part of that tour i, I do remember that now i don't let you mention that yeah it was the full circle tour i believe yeah i saw skillet on the date that was here in tampa that was the last time i saw him but i totally forgot that you guys were on that tour yeah yeah i, I can't remember how many dates we did maybe like 10 or something like that it was just a small run for us because yeah they changed i think they changed out a few of the opening bands skillet was one of them um but yeah, I mean, it was basically the same band other than just replacing the lead singer. And so yeah. you know, kind of known, you know, we've met him before in the past, but it's always uh, good to see him again. And, uh, you know, we're big, of course, Mark Tremonti fans. We've known him since we were growing up with Creed. And, um, and you know, they're just cool guys. They're really down to earth. Um, you know, I, I got the chance to talk to Mark Tremonti for a while just in the in the catering room and and it, they're just like regular people just like us just uh you know love what they do you know they're artists so it's like we just love creating music and creating um you know encouraging music for people who, to um to you know kind of gravitate to and and to uh you know I, I, we hear this a lot uh because we do these vips uh with um, some of our fans and they talk to us about how, like how a certain song hit them at a certain time in their life and really like helped them for, for good or for change, you know, to change their life. It was the first um, show on this run of the tour. It was in Flint, Michigan. This guy came up to us and uh, he said, uh, he showed us this picture that he had been on, uh, did a VIP like 10 years ago. And he was like overweight. He had like gained like, or he had, uh, he was about 450 pounds. He said, and we looked at him now and he'd lost all this weight and he said ever since he had did, done that vip and he had like got a chance to get a hold of our music and listen to it like he really like turned turned himself around and he said specifically the song start again from the second record innocence instinct really just changed his life and i was like that's awesome man so we love hearing stories like that where people um you know they grab onto a song and they and they um you know, it changes them for the better. And that is, uh, that was actually one of my next question, you know, obviously fans are impacted by, uh, you know, being able to see you guys in concert. And I, you know, it took me back to the first time that I saw you guys in concert. It was actually at 
uh, Rock Universe 2006, September 2006. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is a picture of me and you. Uh, look how young event. we look. I know. And you know, it, it kind of led me to believe like, okay, every time I've ever met Michael, he, he's been bald. He's had no hair. And I'm like, are there any pictures in existence that we have actually seen that actually show you with hair? And I'm like, it's, I asked the same thing with Peter Furler of the Newsboys. Like I never had seen him with without hair, but you rock that bald look every every night on tour, man. It seems to work for you. Yeah, thankfully, when I first shaved my head <clears throat> in my uh, early or it was a mid twenties, that uh, I had a pretty good shaped head, so it worked out. Worked out <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. So you know, going with the stories and stuff that you hear on tour and stuff, obviously, you know, uh, you know, red red is also known in like Christian rock circles and stuff. And scriptures uh, in God's word can oftentimes be a huge comfort uh, that we have in life during chaos and turmoil that we're all bound to face at some time or another. But I'm curious, is there a passage or maybe a scripture that has really helped you in times of need and times that you're going through stuff? Um, <clears throat> I mean, one that always always comes to mind whenever somebody asks is uh psalm 23 i know a lot of people love psalm 23 and it's just you know it's a it's a psalm that really just comforts you um i know when david wrote that psalm he may have been going through hard times you know he may have been being chased after by saul and hiding in caves and whatnot but he knew that he could lean on god and 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 he would lead him to still waters and you know uh and and so it was, it was really a, it's a psalm for people that, you know, maybe going through stress in their life or <clears throat> don't know, don't know what their next move is, but to, 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 you know, to remember God and, and to rest in his word and, um, and, and that really to put, you know, bring that to heart for sure. I know uh, there's other scriptures that come to mind. I don't know the, the passage specifically, but I always think about uh, Ephesians 4.32 about uh, being kind one to another. Um, and loving one another and forgiving one another, you know, even as Christ has forgiven you. Um, okay. that's something I always keep in mind that, you know, uh, a lot of people are always about, you know, quick to judge others uh, and, and just remember that, you know, you know, all have fallen short and uh, and we need to be mindful that we're, <clears throat> you know, sinful creatures and we've messed up too as well. And, and but, you know, but thank God for the grace of God that uh, he saved us and uh, and that we're here. And, uh, and that we can share that love to others and, and, uh, and show that kindness to others. That's right. Well, last question for you before we close this out. Let's talk legacy for a moment. Um, sure. you, know, you guys in Red have released a lot of amazing records over the years. And I can't go without saying that, you know, I, I like all the Red records, but there's one that's really stuck out to me. It's uh, one that I have would say is your masterpiece the one that i can go back and listen to from front to back that i that i still absolutely love even nearly a decade after its release and that's a beauty and rage that's uh like i said I've, i still love end of silence that's still my go-to but a beauty and rage just has something about it that um that i absolutely love and you know going back and listening to that uh all this time is really cool but you know, looking to the future, you know, when Red's touring days are are gone, you and I are both gone on the view of the Lord. What is it that you want fans to remember you guys for the most? And, you know, future fans, what do you want them to, you know, see when they, you know, happen to pick up, uh, you know, a copy of a Red record and listen to it? I mean, I agree with you. Like, it's like in anything that I do as an individual, whether it's music or whether, you know, I'm taking care of my family, you know, I want it to be the best quality, the best that I can do um, at that time. And, <clears throat> you know, I really feel like a lot of our music can kind of stand the test of time. Like if you go, like you said, if you go back a decade ago and you listen to a beauty and rage, it's still just as relevant to you now as it was 10 years ago, or you can go back to end of silence, which was like almost 20 years ago, you know, <laughs> and you're like, wow, that record was so good. And, and it still sounds great. And, you know, and so, you know, I always feel like I want our music to uh, stand the test of time when it comes to um, reaching people um, in the place that they're at, at the time that they're at. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask us like, you know, what's this song mean? And, and so we don't always like tell exactly what our songs mean. We don't want to give away like all of the meaning. Um, there's specific, you know, meaning in mind that we write when we write the song, but, you know, we really want it to be open a little bit 
for people to meet them where they're at, you know, for where, you know, cause that could, it could be different for each person. Um, and so I think that's why, you know, we have a wide variety of, of fans. You'll see people from all different walks of life that, um, that come and gravitate towards a concert or that love our music. Oh, that's awesome. And I've, you know, I've got that a lot over the years and that's why I continue to love you guys. And every time I get a chance to come see you guys in concert and stuff, uh, I'm always there because uh, it's, it, it's, it's an experience. If you've never seen red in concert on a headlining tour. Um, and that's, that's one cool thing is you guys have had some pretty sick and cool stage sets. I mean, the beauty and rage, like the stage set you guys had for that was awesome and i just i think back to that it's like that's one thing i could always count on like i said okay red's gonna do a tour what is this stage gonna look like because you had like a machine you had like the when the the feed the machine song you had that huge like machine looking set on stage of beauty and rage you had the the big set that you had like on the winter jam tour and stuff and i'm like i always look forward to a headlining tour from you guys because i'm like okay what's the stage going to look like for this one? So I'm excited uh, about this tour, excited about the Rated R record and this uh, new short film, The Redeemers. And Michael, man, I appreciate you joining us today. It's been great to have you on here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the tour out in the road, man, and just praying for you guys and, you know, praying that, that you know, the Lord can still continue to use you guys uh, with the records and out in the tour, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jay.